welcome back uh, to this course on organic chemistry in drug design and development. In the last session, we have discussed uh, the some of the chemistry of coenzymes and we define what are coenzymes and what are cofactors and then uh, we have seen that the most of the coenzymes are derived from uh, vitamins and in fact vitamins are the pro coenzymes that means they have to be transformed into uh, a species which finally acts as the coenzyme. We have seen that how these vitamins have been classified, it is lipid soluble and water soluble, lipid soluble A, D, E and K and we have discussed the chemistry of A then followed by D and we have also covered E. We will come back and these three uh, we have separately discussed A is actually a coenzyme which is involved in the chemistry of vision, D is a hormone and E is an antioxidant. Okay. So, three different roles of these three vitamins uh, which are fat soluble or lipid soluble. Vitamin K has a, has a function in blood coagulation, we will discuss that after discussing some of the water soluble vitamins mainly the B group of vitamins and C that is ascorbic acid. Okay. So, let us start with the water soluble vitamins. The first one we want to discuss is what is known as pyridoxal phosphate or abbreviated as PLP. Okay. So, the as I said PLP is the final coenzyme form. So, this is not the vitamin, the vitamin is, uh, is pyridoxal that is the alcohol. So, it is a pyridine uh, framework with four different substitutions at the four position you have the CH 2 H and at the three position also uh, uh, this is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, at the five position you have this uh, hydroxy methyl also at this there is a phenolic OH and a methyl. Okay. Now, this uh, is one of the uh, pro coenzyme form or one of the vitamin B 6. Now, in, uh, in the biological system what happens that this pyridoxal is converted by a dehydrogenase enzyme uh, which is which oxidizes pyridoxal to pyridoxal now, L means aldehyde. So, it is oxidized to pyridoxal and this pyridoxal uh, via a kinase mediated phosphorylation it goes to a phosphate namely the 5 carbon this is 1 again repeat 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, the 5 hydroxy methyl is converted to a phosphate and this is the final coenzyme form of vitamin B 6. Now, uh, just a curiosity that why nature has um, selected uh, or has um, has adopted to uh, protect this 5 hydroxy methyl. What was the problem? It was uh, if it was free and now remember there is an aldehyde at the 4 position. So, this is very well known in sugar chemistry that a hydroxy aldehyde uh, can form a hemiacetal linkage like this provided the ring site is um, is either 5 or 6 membered okay? because you know that this is the uh, furanoid structure and in glucose that was the pyranoid pyranose structure okay the furanose and the pyranose uh, so in order to suppress this uh, it is protected as the phosphate if it is not protected then the aldehyde cannot show its full functional uh, activity because it is now forming the hemiacetal now, let us see what type of reaction pyridoxal phosphate is involved as a coenzyme. Okay. Remember, do not forget that this is actually a coenzyme. So, we are now discussing the PLP dependent enzymatic reactions, okay, the enzymes which require PLP. One reaction is called the transamination reaction. What is the transamination reaction? That is basically 
transfer of an amino group from an amino acid into an alpha keto acid and in this reaction what happens that the starting alpha keto acid becomes the amino acid and the amino acid on the other hand becomes the alpha keto acid. So, this is what is called transamination because basically there is a uh, the amine from one amino acid a, is transferred the amino group is transferred to the keto acid which itself which in turn is converted to the a new amino acid. So, this is called transamination because this is this transferred and um, apparently that this oxygen uh, is transferred here, but actually this this as we uh, go through the mechanism we will see that this oxygen resulted from uh, water. Okay. Not that this oxygen is transferred here and this amine is transferred in place of oxygen. The amine is true, the amine is transferred here, the same nitrogen is here, but this oxygen is derived from water. So, this is what is transamination. That means, by transamination, one can synthesize uh, new amino acids utilizing whatever existing amino acids that we have. Okay. Then there is something which is called decarboxylation. Decarboxylation is decarboxylation of amino acids, it is not for other things, decarboxylation of amino acids. Now, these are what are the amino acids, amino acids means alpha amino acids, we are talking about the protein amino acids. So, decarboxylation will give you R C H 2 N H 2 and this is done by an enzyme called decarboxylase. Okay. This is done by an enzyme called transaminase, this is done by an enzyme called decarboxylase and this is also very important. The transamination gives a route to new amino acids which are not present in the body. So, you can make that and then decarboxylation allows you to make uh, compounds which are having primary amino groups. Now, we will see later on that these primary amine, amino group uh, acts uh, com compounds containing this primary amino groups they act as neurotransmitters they act as neurotransmitters and they are actually derived from many amino acids we are not specifying r here many amino acids can be decarboxylated and many types of neurotransmitters can be obtained now the third reaction is called a racemization reaction and the enzyme will be called a racemase and racemase means that all the protein amino acids that uh, we have they are they belong to the L configuration or if you translate it to RS they are S configured amino acids except for cysteine, cysteine is the L cysteine corresponds to D. Now, racemase means you take L amino acid and you convert it into I mean, this enzyme which is a PLP dependent enzyme and the enzyme is called a racemase. So, what it will do? It will convert the L amino acid into D amino acid. Okay. Now, we generally have the impression that all the uh, protein amino acids or amino acids present in the, uh, in the, in the living system, they belong to uh, L configuration, but there are few, of, few exceptions this D configured amino acids such a list let me find out what is the L and D. So, here the hydrogen is beta in order to make it L and here the hydrogen is alpha in order to make it D. Okay. And now, this um, transformation is very important this is a reversible reaction of course, because racemization is always a reversible and ultimately usually if you do it chemically then you will get a 50 50 mixture, but if you are doing enzymatically then because the enzymes are chiral. So, one form may predominate over the other. Okay. Now, D amino acids are important in the formation of bacterial cell wall. The bacterial cell wall requires the presence of or requires D amino acid like D alanine as a building block. So, this is very important for survival of bacteria. Now, let us go the uh, discuss the 
to the slide where the mechanisms of these uh, different reactions are given. Okay. So, let us consider this reaction. The transamination reaction catalyzed by a transaminase, I already told you this is a transaminase, uh, but depending on the uh, amino acid you can you can call this uh, according because transaminase means different enzymes taking different amino acids as their starting material. So, it, you can call it a transaminase that means, which in takes glutamic acid and then another alpha keto acid. The glutamic acid goes to the uh, keto acid that is 2 oxoglutaric acid also known as alpha ketoglutaric acid or alpha kg and the in turn the starting keto acid goes to the amino acid. Okay. So, this will be called a glutamate transaminase that means, your glutamate is the amino acid part. Okay. So, we want to discuss the mechanism of this reaction. The mechanism of this reaction is shown in this slide, but I will explain it a uh, little bit elaborately. We again write the structure of this pyridoxal phosphate okay. CHO we are not writing these uh, substituents that is okay. So, these are um, the three substituents here. Now, this group this pyridoxal phosphate in presence of uh, in presence in the biological medium where the pH is normally kept is usually maintained at 7.2. So, this nitrogen because its p k is, is more than 9. So, that will be mainly in the protonated form. Okay. So, if it is in the protonated form then uh, you see that there is a pressure on this molecule this electron uh, in the ring the nitrogen being an electronegative element having a positive charge it will it will like to have a neutral nitrogen. So, how can it do that by withdrawing the electrons towards itself the bond pair especially the pi bonds are the vulnerable bonds. So, what happens here? So, we can say that this is kind of an electron sink because it pulls electron and um, so, when it reacts with a uh, with an amino acid remember we are talking about a reaction where a keto acid plus an amino acid forms uh, amino acid goes to the keto acid and the, and the keto acid goes to the amino acid. So, there are two substrate it is a two substrate reaction. So, first it is the substrate uh, this amine containing substrate that means, the amino acid containing substrate that first reacts with the goes and binds pyridoxal is already uh, sorry pyridoxal is already uh, bound to the to the enzyme. So, amine the amino acid reacts with this. Okay. I am not talking about I am not telling now just I take a very general case hmm. that means, I will not take that this is a glutamic acid I will just write here it is R 1 and uh, sorry nitrogen and then let me write it properly. So, you mean and then what you will have you will have this C H that is the alpha carbon you have C O 2 H and you have this R okay, R attached to the carbon. Now, let us inspect this molecule a little bit uh, in detail. As I say this is an electron sink. Uh, so, now it wants to pull the electrons towards itself. If it does that that this electron pair the pi bond goes to the nitrogen. So, that creates a positive charge here in the carbon. So, the carbon gets neutralized uh, it neutralizes the charge by pulling the next adjacent double bond. If it does that the positive charge comes here. So, ultimately then this double bond will be pulled towards this self to, to this carbon carbon bond nitrogen becomes plus, but nitrogen also because the whole genesis is the plus charge of nitrogen. So, this nitrogen also does not want to be positively charged. So, now it will pull or break some of the because there is no double bond now here. Okay. So, now it wants to pull some of these breaks some of these bonds in order to 
neutralize the positive charge of the nitrogen. So, what happens? So, there is a CH bond that can break, there is a CC bond, but this CC bond belong to a carboxy group and this is a CR bond that is uh, uh, that is a CC bond, but this, this is not, uh, this could be either methyl in case of alanine, in case of glutamic acid this is CH2, CH2, CO2H. So, it is a basically carbon attached to an aliphatic carbon. So, that is a very strong bond, carbon carbon bond. This is also a carbon carbon bond, but this is not a, uh, this is a attached to belongs to the carboxy group. So, now it has got two options, one is that the hydrogen can be lost like this. So, there is a uh, relay process whereby the electrons that is released by the hydrogen that goes ultimately to the nitrogen in the pyridinium ion. Why it happens? Because this is an electron sink, the nitrogen wants to neutralize its positive charge. Okay. The other option is the carboxy group also can be this CC bond can be can be broken, but that uh, will lead to the second type of reaction that is called the decarboxylation, we will come to that. So, first let us consider that this hydrogen can be lost. So, if this hydrogen can uh, is lost, then what you get is a system which is NH double bond, then you have a double bond here CH and then N double bond C and you have R, you have CO 2 H okay. and these are the three substituents. Now, what happens? This system has paid the price of acting as an electron sink and what is the price? The price is that this was aromatic to start with, now this is not aromatic. Okay, so, if it is not aromatic, it wants to regain the aromaticity. So, again you have to utilize this nitrogen, bring it here, this bond goes here, this goes, this has two options, either it can take up the proton at this point, okay. so the or it can go further down and then take the or this wherever that carbon was attached to a hydrogen, it can go up to the up to that point also. Now, so basically actually in this slide I can explain all the three reactions. First of all this hydrogen can be lost, why this is lost? Because first of all the hydrogen is easy to release number one, this is acting as a sink that is the driving force. Instead of hydrogen you can have decarboxylation that gives the family of decarboxylase enzymes. And then when it comes back there is a price as I said there is this aromaticity loss. So, it wants to regain the aromaticity, when it regains the aromaticity the electrons just uh, fly in the in the opposite direction. So, the nitrogen lone pair comes here, this goes here and now it has th there are two options either the hydrogen can be taken up by this carbon or if it goes further here in this carbon nitrogen bond then this has to take the hydrogen. Okay. Now, remember when the hydrogen is lost, this carbon has lost its stereochemical integrity that means it is no longer a stereogenic, uh, it is no longer a chiral chirality center. So, when the chirality is lost and then regained at that point it can go from L to D. Okay. So, that means the enzymes which allows it to abstract the hydrogen here, it goes to the D, it, it has the option to form the D amino acids okay. and uh, if it goes up to here, then actually that is the mechanism for transamination. I will show you, I will just continue NH and now it has got again it has become the positively charged nitrogen and this becomes CH2 and then N double bond C R and CO2 H. Okay. So, now what will happen? The first part of the reaction is over. Now, water comes and attacks this carbon and hydrolyzes the imine. Imine hydrolyzed means it will be it will form the amine and the and the carbonyl. Okay. So, back to the amine carbonyl stage. So, what are these what is the amine and what is the carbonyl species? The amine is basically now this will be CH2 NH2. Now, this is what is called pyridoxamine, pyridoxamine 
phosphate. Remember this CH2OH is actually attached to a phosphate. Okay. And what is the other product? The other product is your R C double bond O and CO 2 H. So, now the amino acid has been converted into the keto acid alpha keto acid. So, one part of the reaction is over. Now, about the second part of the reaction that means now this pyridoxamine is held as a um, in the active site and then now the other keto acid other keto acid means namely R 1 suppose another alpha keto acid R 1 CO 2 H. Now, that reacts with this pyridoxamine pyrophosphate uh, sorry phosphate and you get so phosphate and pyridoxamines means NH 2. Now, that will form again the imine another imine with the new alpha keto acid that was your substrate your starting material. So, this will form C H uh, 2 and then N double bond C R 1 CO 2 H that is your starting R 1 it comes from the starting alpha keto acid. Okay. Now, what will happen there will be a tautomeric shift this one of the hydrogen here goes to the this carbon. So, that is a 1 3 prototropic shift and if that happens then your you get an imine, but the double bond is now between the pyridoxal carbon and the nitrogen and pyridoxal carbon and the nitrogen and not the alpha carbon and the nitrogen. So, then it goes to that one CO 2 H and if it happens that way then uh, so, now you have this N H plus these two substituents I think now it is easy this is R 1 now there will be a hydrolysis here. So, if there is hydrolysis so what will happen you get the R 1 this is there is a C H that is what is missing. Hmm. So, N C R 1 CO 2 H and there is the H. Now, this tautomeric shift is enzymatically controlled. So, what you get is uh, is the L configured L configured amino acid. So, R 1 C H CO 2 H and the N H 2, but since it is an enzymatic reaction. So, it is a kind of asymmetric synthesis. So, you uh, finally, get only the L configured compound uh, because the enzymes are chiral reagents. So, that is the mechanism of mechanism of transamination. Now, mechanism of decarboxylation is now become in the now it is easy. So, basically everything is an electron source, electron source and electron sink. Initially, electron source in transamination was the amino acid itself okay. when it forms the imine the hydrogen breaks in transamination and then ultimately uh, that amino acid is released as keto acid then the uh, the other substrate keto acid comes and uh, joins with the forms the imine then there is a tautomeric shift the double bond shifts from one position to the other resulting in release of pyridoxal, phos pyridoxal phosphate. So, that means release of the same coenzyme and then uh, the amino and uh, the, the keto acid in the turn is converted to L alpha amino acids. Now, instead of the hydrogen if there is if there is breakage of the sorry is there is breakage of the carbon carbon bond the carbon basically involving the one of the carbon belongs to the carboxy carbon of the amino acid. Okay. So, what happens here that you have C this is your imine. So, the initial intermediate is same for all these cases that is the imine and then now instead of the hydrogen the enzyme must be having a base here some basic group and that abstracts the hydrogen this goes here 
and that releases the that breaks the carbon dioxide uh, releases the carbon dioxide and so this is plus this is as a result of the electron withdrawing power of this pyridoxal unit because you know that alpha uh, this any carboxylic acid if it has an electron withdrawing group attached here then that uh, not here sorry electron withdrawing group uh, at this point then what happens suppose I, I write this so that goes there because it is electron withdrawing so the um, the uh, the electrons now flow to the this is acting as the electron sink. So, we know that this is beta keto systems uh, beta keto, but there could be other functionalities it is not necessarily keto it could be other functionality like um, it could be imine or it could be this pyridoxal mediated homologous imine. Okay. So, basically electron sink character promotes this decarboxylation and after that it is easy that you get the loss of aromaticity by doing this and so the next step will be regaining of aromaticity and you get R C and this is hydrogen. Okay. So, instead of hydrogen CO2 is lost now and then now the again it is the reverse direction the electron starts to flow why it will flow because to regain the aromaticity now it is acting as electron source. So, sink and then now it is as soon as it finishes the uh, it achieves the or uh, neutralizes the electron sink character it becomes an electron source. So, nitrogen lone pair uh, again flies back in the opposite direction and this takes up the hydrogen okay. that hydrogen the base is already having that hydrogen. So, the base is pause plus and then the base is now uh, really the base is again released at the active site and what is the product the product is again the imine but here the pyridoxal carbon is attached to the nitrogen by the double bond. So, this is the situation CH 2 um, sorry CH 2 yes CH 2 R now. So, one hydrogen CH 2 R now there will be hydrolysis and finally, what you get is R CH 2 NH 2 okay. the free amine you will get and you release the PLP. So, that PLP can participate again uh, in the reaction and another substrate goes and binds okay. everything is intact the base is also released at the active site whatever the amino acid side chain and the pyridoxal is also uh, released as the aldehyde. So, that is the mechanism of decarboxylation what is the some of the decarboxylation reactions are extremely important uh, usually amino acids are the starting materials for decarboxylation it has to be because the mechanism says that you have to form the imine with the pyridoxal making it an electron sink. Now, if you take glutamic acid and if you decarboxylate remember there are two carboxylic acids, but it will only be the uh, this this carboxy that means the uh, amino acid carboxy not the side chain carboxy which is decarboxylated. So, if it is lost then what you will get is what is called GABA gamma amino butyric acid alpha beta gamma. So, this is gamma amino butyric acid this is a very important neurotransmitter I said that many of these neurotransmitters which are essential for our mental health uh, for keeping our mental health uh, in the perfect form. So, this optimum concentration of gamma gamma amino butyric acid is necessary. Similarly, you have other compounds like dopamine which is obtained from now this is your dopamine dopamine is also a very important uh, very important neurotransmitter okay neurotransmitters are basically released from the neuron and then it um, in the medicinal chemistry will discuss the actual biochemistry that what is the um, medicine or what it does when the neurotransmitter is released. So, it uh, brings about certain reactions and then certain it creates certain signals, but you have to uh, 
uh, you have to maintain an optimum concentration of these neurotransmitters in the uh, central nervous system or in the brain. Okay, that is um, that is if there is a disbalance then the different types of mental diseases that occur. Okay. So, this is a very important target for drug development. Okay. And then racemization, I have already told you how racemization will be obtained that you will take the um, amino acid, um, amino acid forms the imine and then the hydrogen is lost. So, there are two now sites here, one is a base, another is the conjugate acid form of the base and then uh, this is in the uh, this is projected upwards and that is projected downwards. So, this base abstracts the hydrogen because this is alpha. So, that is closer to this B. So, that abstracts the hydrogen then that uh, that breaks and then the same thing happens electron sync character of the spiridinium ion is demonstrated and then as soon as that forms it again comes back and then takes the hydrogen not from here. Now, it has the uh, it can it has the option by taking the hydrogen from this base which is having the hydrogen which is lost or it can take the hydrogen from the conjugate acid that is actually projected upwards. So, if the hydrogen is delivered from the top and then you will get the D form of the amino acid. Okay. So, that is uh, the very simple mechanism it is again the loss of hydrogen like the transamination, but here again the hydrogen is regained, but in the intermediate the stereochemistry is lost and in the final product the stereochemistry is again regenerated. So, that is why the L amino acids can be converted to D. I uh, the importance of L amino acids is that I already told you that the bacterial cell wall is made up of D uh, alanine that is D alanine is a constituent of bacterial cell wall. So, also in D glutamic acid and uh, so this isomerization is very vital for the bacteria to survive because they have to make the cell wall. So, if you can stop this happening, if you can stop uh, generate an inhibitor which inhibits this L alanine to D alanine uh, process, then you will get you know, what you will discover is an antibiotic okay? uh, or an antibacterial agent because if it is synthetic then it will be an antibacterial agent. I will talk about this all these things. Uh, during the latter half of this course that is the when we talk about take up the medicinal chemistry part. The, the next one is uh, in the, so we have considered the vitamin B 6, uh, we have uh, discussed that three types of reactions it catalyzes uh, or it, it takes part uh, along with the enzyme or it takes part to help the enzyme to catalyze the reaction. And the next one is what is called thiamine pyrophosphate. Remember the spelling thiamine in DNA one of the base is called thiamine. So, you must recognize the difference. This is thiamine pyrophosphate also um, the starting compound that means, this is not this is the coenzyme form the starting compound is known as thiamine only. Okay. Thiamine is what is called the this is belongs to the vitamin B 1. The structure is given here this is what is thiamine it has got a pyrimidine nucleus and it has got a thiazolidine which is present in the uh, in the salt form okay, n plus and then it has got a side chain hydroxyethyl and a methyl. So, this is the vitamin form or the pro coenzyme form and the actual coenzyme is it becomes a it becomes a diphosphate or a pyrophosphate. So, that is why, so this weight is converted to a pyrophosphate by a kinase suitable kinase enzyme and so you get the coenzyme form of TPP okay. and um, this we will just um, finish this uh, session by saying that this hydrogen is quite acidic because of the positive charge on the nitrogen. So, it wants to pull the uh, again pull the electrons towards itself thus making it the hydrogen very labile. Now, Ronald Breslow of Columbia University in the 1950s he did an experiment. He took this um, thiamine pyrophosphate dissolved it in D2O and took an NMR of that and slowly what he found that this hydrogen is replaced 
by the deuterium. Okay. So, the deuterium where from it is coming or the existence of deuterium uh, or the exchange of hydrogen by deuterium shows that this hydrogen is very acidic. Okay. If this hydrogen is very acidic, so Breslow proposed a structure which looks like this um, for the thiamine pyrophosphate that this is a minus that means the hydrogen is there. I just represent this by R. So, that is R nitrogen is plus and uh, sorry not this I'm extremely sorry just this is the double bond must be on this side double bond is here and that is the O P P. Okay. So, this is the thiamine pyrophosphate in aqueous solution at pH say 7.2. So, it exists as a zwitter ion. It exists as a zwitter ion and you can draw another resonating structure of this and that is your the nitrogen withdraws the because the culprit for this formation of release of the hydrogen is the nitrogen with a positive charge. Uh, so, nitrogen can withdraw these electrons towards itself thus making it neutral thus making it neutral, but what happens to the carbon? The carbon now uh, is the carbon is basically having a lone pair, but it is not uh, having any charge, but the thing is that it is now a, it has got 6 electrons. So, it is a sextet of that. Um, so, it becomes a sextet of electrons again I go back to this. So, this is the structure uh, of this other form uh, the substituents are here also. So, the substituents are here. So, that is O P P. So, this is the neutral form, but this is also called the carbene because the nitrogen is in the having a six uh, the carbon is having a having six electrons around surrounding it two electrons here two plus two plus two six. So, that is extractable that is a that is a carbene. Okay. Carbene is the neutral carbon bivalent carbon. So, it has got a carbene structure it has got a zwitter ionic structure, but this structure obviously predominates because all the nitrogens uh, all the car, uh, atoms are fulfilling the octet. Okay. Here the octet is not fulfilled for the carbene, but anyway uh, this very fact that this is the predominant form that means this carbon is now a nucleophile. In fact, Breslow's work on thiamine pyrophosphate has given rise to a new type of chemistry uh, in synthetic organic chemistry that is the use of n heterocyclic carbon. These are what are n heterocyclic carbons. Okay. So, those are synthetic compounds you can have another nitrogen here all these things, but nature has picked up sulfur. Okay. Nature has picked up sulfur uh, there is a reason for that that sulfur can have this empty 3 d orbitals. So, these anion can also uh, can delocalize with the sulfur uh, d empty 3 d orbitals okay, thus giving greater stability of the zwitter ionic structure. Okay. So, next session this session concludes with the chemistry of um, uh, pyridoxal and we have started just initially we have proved the structure of thiamine pyrophosphate which is the coenzyme form of vitamin B 1 that is thiamine. Thank you.